What's up, guys? JR Raymond back again uh, here in quarantine for yet another day. Who knows how long this thing's going to go on, but uh, hopefully soon we'll get to get back into the bowling center. But why not tell some stories? I got a couple of stories for you we're going to talk about here in a minute. Stay tuned. <laughs> So I got a couple of stories for you uh, from being out on tour, just a couple of recent ones that, uh, I guess one's not so recent, the other one is more recent, but they're more of a few times that I've gotten into it with a couple of people. Um, one of them is on our staff, I got into it with EJ at one point, we'll talk about that one a little bit later. But the most recent one I think is the, is the more funny one, is uh, one that I got into with, uh, I mean, we're not even going to name names in these just because it's probably the right thing to do. But we were at the Players' Championship in, uh, in Columbus this year, uh, this past summer. or Was it the summer? No, it was just not that long ago, actually. I don't remember when it was. Maybe it was the summer. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was July or August or something like that. But anyway, so we're, in, we're at the Players' Championship in Bowling. Uh, and there's tight quarters down there. Like, there's not much room. And everybody's got at least nine balls down there, or six to nine on the concourse. Um, and you have little walkways every other pair uh, to be able to get down to the pairs. And the only place to put bowling balls are either under the seating or, um, you know, right next to the walkway area there. Um, and as you move from pair to pair, you've got people getting on top of each other. You've got the next pair coming into a pair that's not even done yet. And then you've got people putting bowling balls in front of each other. And it just turns into a giant mess, people trying to move from pair to pair. Because those people that are coming to the next pair can't wait at that last pair because there's people coming to that pair. So it, you're kind of, you're, you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. If you sit there, you get yelled at from those people for waiting to go to your next pair. They're telling you to get the heck out of the way. But if you go to the next pair... Hey, now you're waiting for that pair and they're mad at you because you're blocking them in. So I'm going to the next pair and uh, I've got my, I've only got six balls with me at this point. So I'm taking my two rollers and uh, I move and pull them into the walkway and I go and stand on the walkway. And this person that I got into it with, they look at me and they say, yeah, that's a smart idea. Putting stuff right into the walkway where there's nowhere now for anybody to go. And I looked down and I looked at them and I said, would you rather me block your stuff in like most everybody else is doing? Here I am trying to be nice, not blocking you guys in from getting from your pair to your next pair. And you're now mad at me for blocking the walkway where nobody's walking anyway because they should be bowling, not walking off the concourse to go do whatever they're going to go do. There are no smoke breaks. There is none of that. So who's walking in between there to go down to the floor where everybody's bowling or to go back to the settee area where all the spectators are sitting? Nobody. So you're going to jump my case. And mind you, this is somebody who, I mean, they're basically my status. They're nobody either, you know. So it's not like they were a 10-time Titleist or a Hall of Famer or anybody. It was somebody who has, over the years, been pretty much a... a for lack of a better word, a, a jerk, you know, to me uh, at a few different times. This isn't the first time I've gotten into it with this person. Um, but th at this point, at this time, the, the, he literally wants me to block everybody's stuff in rather than move it to the walkway and wait for them to move where I can then move my stuff out of the walkway. Well, needless to say, this turned into a big fiasco and he just kept... All of a sudden, he started calling me names, started calling me stupid, and whatever else. And it was it was ridiculous. Um, and, and, you know, a bunch of people are overhearing the whole thing. And, of course, now I'm fired up. Now I'm like, this is ridiculous. This guy's being a complete moron, all because he's bowling bad. And needless to say, he goes to the next pair of bowls, 150 or something, and then ends up withdrawing from the tournament not too long after that. And I go on to the next pair and actually bowl 298. <laughs> so it worked out in my favor. I got fired up and bowled better. Uh, he apparently got fired up and bowled worse. So it, that's just what it is. That's sometimes what happens. Um, and then it was it was funny. Um, <laughs> quite a few years back when I was basically a rookie, I was bowling the U.S. Open, and we were in an Indianapolis, and... Uh, a, this time it was a Hall of Famer, um, and this is where it kind of comes into play where people are like, where some new bowlers don't like going out there, and they're nervous because they don't want to get yelled at. Well, I was young. I didn't care. I wasn't going to let somebody just walk all over me. I didn't care who they were. You know, I'm out there thinking that I'm just as good as anybody, and at that point, I was bowling pretty good, so I was, with, I was inside the U.S. Open cut at that point, so I'm bowling okay. 
Um, and where, the way their settees, well, again, another settee problem. The way they were set up, uh, there's couches, and then there's a little space in between the couches and everything else, and then there's room to walk in between the couches um, going through. Well, I'm standing in between the walkway and the couches, uh, and I'm not sticking out at all, so people have plenty of room to get by me. Well, this Hall of Famer apparently thought that they needed more room than they really did, and uh, he's carrying a two-ball tote and a triple and very easily got by me, but decided to make a comment that says, these stupid kids taking up this walkway all the time, we can't even get through here with bowling balls. I didn't take that too well, so I looked at this gentleman and I said, I'm sorry, would you like me to put out a red freaking carpet for you so your old ass can get to your next pair? He didn't like that too well. He just mumbled off and grumbled. And again, it's another person that I've gotten into it a couple times. This same person at the World Series, not too many years back, like 2014 or 15, um, is bowling on a pair next to me. So he's now three lanes over, four lanes over, because I've got the pair to my right, or I've got the lane to my right, and then two more lanes over. So he's three lanes over, and I'm on the fourth lane this way. Um, and the way the PPA works is there's, there's, you know, the double jump rule. You got to let a pair to the left go and a pair to the right. So when, uh, when you're getting up on the approach, you grab your ball and you wait for somebody on the left, you wait for somebody on the right. Well, that somebody, same old, old guy that, you know, really <laughs> had problems at the time, um, got into it with me and he said, uh, uh, I picked up my ball while he was on the approach and he threw and slammed his ball down. He looks at me and he says, you can't wait till I get moving. I can see you out of the corner of my eye. And of course, you know, nothing really transpired of it after that, but I kind of, I chuckled it off and walked up to him and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I figured your old ass had Carteract or something you couldn't see. Or, you know, I said something about, you know, <laughs> eye disease or something. I was a jerk about it basically uh, in a laughing way. And we both laughed it off afterwards. He's just like, no, I'm sorry. But this time he apologized. And, uh, and this was, again, this was after the first incident that I had with him. So this time he knew I wasn't going to put up with it. Uh, and so he, he chuckled it off and he's like, no, man, I'm sorry. I just, I could see everything and it just threw me off and, you know, not your fault. Just, you know, I just, just try to be more aware. And so I'm like, I can respect that. I, you know, that's fine. So from there on, you know, I'm, I'm waiting a little bit longer than usual out of respect for him. Uh, it's just when people come at me like that, I, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't deal with it very well, uh, and I'm I snap like I come right back at people. Uh, I I stand up for myself because I don't like dealing with that stuff. But um, just, that's just a couple of stories. Um, the the last one I had was uh, <laughs> with EJ, and EJ will tell you this story too. We went at it pretty good at a regional. Um, a few years. And this sounds like I get into it with everybody, which <laughs> this granted, this is spread over, you know, a 10 year span now, 15 year span now. So, uh, it's not like this is happening every event, but it does seem to happen and catch me at the wrong times. But, uh, so now I'm bowling with EJ. We're in match play. He's bowling on the right of me. And then I'm bowling you know, obviously to the pair to the left. Um, <laughs> and he's bowling poor. He's having a rough game. And, uh, I went up and I missed a spare. And I was PO'd. I was not happy. And I'm mumbling off the lane, and I'm like, dang it, you know, and walk off and mumbling. He goes up, and he misses his spare. So what does he do? He comes right back at me, and he starts yelling at me like, dude, you're like, you're the only one that's ever missed a spare or got mad? No, he's freaking out on me over this. And I'm like, dude, EJ, what, like, what is wrong with you? Like, you have never gotten up, kicked anything, punched a ball return, gotten mad, like... You of all people, and this was when he was younger. This was a few years back. So this was when he really was hot-headed. He's not nearly as bad now. But this is when he was really hot-headed. And, he, and I'm like, dude, you're seriously going to yell at me when you just three frames earlier were screaming at the foul line, yelling down lanes, cussing up a storm, whatever it may have been. You know, I mean, maybe he wasn't cussing. I was just over-exaggerating a little bit. But, you know, all, all of these guys, you know, they ca we catch each other all the time. People are you know, punching their fists together, you know, screaming or, you know, not necessarily screaming, but, you know, saying, dang it, you know, or bad words towards the foul line, stuff like that. And it just catches you off guard, you know? So I'm the first person that normally I won't, I won't ever say anything to anybody if they ever catch me on the approach. Um, 
Because I know I've done it too. I've caught people. So if I've done it to people, I know people are going to do it to me. I can't get mad at them when I do it as well. You know, so and, and a lot of people do it. You can call it immature if you want, but it's just, it's, it's passion. We like to, we get into it. We really have problems with, <laughs> with bowling bad and, and our expectations, especially mine, my expectations are much higher. Um, and now I'm not as bad as I used to be, but at one point, man, it was, it was pretty brutal. It was pretty rough. I had some times where it was like, I never really laid into anything. Like I never really kicked a ball return or anything like that. Um, I've kicked my bags. I've had some pretty good fry outs as, as far as that goes, but, uh, I haven't really ever done any, I've never like punched a wall or put a hole in a wall or an, Oh, that's not true. That's not true. When I was a kid, <laughs> last story, and then I'll let you guys go. When I was a kid growing up bowling league, um, back up in Gaylord, Michigan, um, my buddy Josh was bowling with me, and I was bowling bad. I think I was, I don't know, I was 17 or 18 at the time, I think. I was bowling bad, and uh, I walked back to the locker room bathroom, because we had actually had a locker room where there was lockers and people were dressing space and all that stuff, and I walked into the bathroom, and I kicked the bathroom door, and it just collapsed in. And I'm laughing now, because it was so stupid. I was such an idiot back then that I should have never done it. Um, but that was the worst thing I've probably ever done is just kicked in the bathroom door. That was pretty bad. I've heard of people tearing off paper towel dispensers in the bathroom. Um, I remember back at Team USA trials not too many years ago, uh, somebody went into the bathroom and tore off all of the paper towel dispensers, just destroyed them. I think it was at, uh, I think it was at the Orleans or something one day, or no, the Suncoast, I believe. So, but anyway... That, that's all I got for you today. I just want to tell you a couple of stories and let you know that people get mad, you know, that we go back and forth and I'm not even somebody that's out there all the time. Imagine what it's like, like go get a hold of Ronnie Russell. He'll tell you a couple of times when, when, he, when he's about killed somebody out on the lanes. It's, some of these stories can be hilarious because then afterwards you're just kind of like brushing it off. You're basically, except for the one person, the first story, me and him still don't get along. We're not, we don't, uh, we don't really talk at all anymore. Um, but uh, everybody else, we pretty much get along now and we, you know, we'll go have drinks afterwards, whatever. It's not a big deal, but for the most part, it's fun. You can, you can hear some really, really cool stories out there. So that's all I got for you. Comment below. Let me know if you've seen any stories or if you've seen some stuff go down on the lanes that, uh, was pretty cool. Like the, you know, like Belmonte and Rash with the bottle bitch, you know, thing situation, that whole thing. I know, uh, uh, Brad Angelo got into it with Belmo too. You know, there's, there's been quite a few times, quite a, quite a few stories out there. So let me know the stories that you know about and we'll talk about them, but I'm out of here guys. We'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe, uh, and comment below. Let me know what you got and, uh, we'll see you guys later. Take care.